deep green velvet darkness of the great forests of old Mother Russia. There was a small village of wooden log cabins and beside it lived an old woman whose name was Babushka, which is Russian for grandmother. Babushka lived by herself and she spent all day cleaning. <laughs> she was always cleaning. She would scrub the floor <laughs> until it was so clean you could eat from it. <laughs> she even painted her doorstep so it was beautiful and red and shiny. And she polished her little windows till they shone like mirrors. The people in the town, the little village, they said, Babushka, she's crazy. She has no visitors. She has no family. Why does she spend all day scrubbing, cleaning and polishing? Her house is so beautiful, you'd think it was ready for royalty. Well, Babushka had no family, but she did love children very much. And so she did what she could. And that was, she became an expert, not only, of course, at baking cakes and bread, <laughs> but she also made the most fabulous toys. She made little soft felt balls for the babies. Little rattles made out of leather with small seeds inside that the tiny ones could shake. She made rag dolls for the little girls. And she gave, gave them little dresses and sweet little scarves as well. <laughs> and for the boys, well, she made them toy huntsmen. She fashioned little tiny bows and arrows. They were just right. And she'd put all of these toys in her basket and take them with her out to the, bar to the market to sell. Now, one day, she had finished all her chores and her house was spotless. And she put her fire to bed and she had just damped it down. She put the ashes over the top to make sure it, it burnt nice and calmly. And she was about to tuck herself up in her nice little wooden bed when there came
Well, they were on the way to see, they had seen a star in the, in the east, and this was a fine new star. And they believed the portent was of a new king. And they were going to find the new king. What a fine idea. And because he was a very important new king, they had brought him presents befitting a new king. And that was gold and frankincense and myrrh. They had chests of it. She knew that. She'd seen all the luggage they brought with them and put them in the chests. Well, she was very excited and they had a lovely night gossiping away. <laughs> but come the morning, and she was a little tired, she went to her bed for a little nap. And I guess the three wise men also had a bit of a nap. Came the evening stars rising in the sky. They picked up all their belongings, preparing to set out. They said, Babushka, you are very kind. Why don't you come with us? You could help us. You could cook for us. That would be really good. <laughs> and she said, but I do not have beautiful clothes like you. I don't have these expensive brocades and ribbons, furs. I couldn't come to a new king. I don't have any gifts fit for a king. You have gold and frankincense. You have rich resins like myrrh. I'm just an old woman. So she said no. And she stayed in her house. Of course, she had a lot of cleaning to do. When you've had that many visitors, it takes a long time to clear up. So she tidied and she scrubbed and she polished until she was absolutely exhausted. And the wise men were long gone. And then she sat back in her rocking chair by the fire, thought about all the things that had happened. And she thought of the wise men, how good it would have been to go with them to see something new. But she had nothing to give a new king, did she? She realized a new king would be but a baby. And the one thing she knew about was gifts for babies. Should she not have balls of softest felt, rattles made of leather, <coughs> full of seeds that little ones could shake? Babushka was so excited. She wrapped her cloak around herself, a headscarf tight around her head, and she set off into the night, gathering up her basket. She followed the footprints. She stopped only to open the door of her goat shed and let the goats run free in the forest. And then she followed them through the night. But Babushka was an old lady. She didn't have the strength to go very far in a cold Russian night. She soon became very tired. She had to take shelter. She found another village and she knocked on the door and she asked to come in. And of course they welcomed her, for one always gives hospitality to those in need. She asked if they had seen a procession, three wise men dressed in furs, silks and embroidery. Well, yes, of course, they had seen them. The most exciting thing to have hit that village in a long time. They sheltered her for the night. In the morning, she set off, following in the footsteps. But before she left, she left a gift for each of the children staying in the house. Soft felt walls, rag dolls, toy huntsmen. 